I never violate them. And uh, I don't think I'm about to do so either. So let's go back to the other topics and not focus on this. John, stay on the line. We'll send you government. Oh, he's gone. That's okay. At least John's willing to read while the government employee, the Iraq war veteran who won the Medal of Honor, wouldn't even read. His mind was made up. He gets the talking points from the federal government on a daily le on a daily level. We have another great caller here, WABC Deanna. Welcome to the program. What's on your mind, uh, Doctor Savage? You know, I'm calling because I want to agree with you about something you said a little bit earlier uh, about the misrepresentation of Trump supporters by the liberal degenerates in the media. Uh, and in fact, like you said, L let's use the word liberal deviance because it's it is a statistical statement that is less, uh, let us say, inflammatory and less able to be criticized. They are deviants in the sense that statistically they're on the far, far left of the liberal spectrum. So let's say the deviants in the media. OK, go on. Well, we'll go with deviants then. Um, we, I really want to say that. We are really, like you said, not these blue-collar, undereducated, uh, potentially financially struggling, uh, angry white men like the media is depicting right now. I really, I was compelled to call because I want to strongly debunk this idea. I think... You mean, wait a minute, you're not an angry white male? I am not an angry... Diana, Diana, wait. Are you sure you're not an angry white male in disguise? I, I am not. I, in fact, uh, represent what many Trump supporters are, and that is uh, I'm educated, I'm financially stable, I am a woman. Uh, I'm, I'm actually financially stable despite my income being raped on a regular basis. Um, I, I support Trump, and many women like me support Trump. My circle of, of friends is people, females, just like me. And we are all like-minded in our... Why, why, why do you want Trump to win? What does he represent to you? Well, I think that, frankly, um, I'm really saturated. I'm completely saturated with the weakness and demise of what of this great country i'm i'm the daughter of immigrants my family came to this country you know for almost 50 years ago without two dimes to rub together and 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 they made something of themselves and they made something of me and i'm so thankful for that and i'd like to restore that pride in this amazing country all right so you actually believe well, you believe trump's motto which is make america great again actually could happen i believe it too it starts with an idea, and it starts with a very strong leader who believes it. And you know that one leader can wreck a nation. Look what Bill Clinton did to the country, and now look what Obama has done. And one leader can save a nation. That's what a leader is called, and that's what we need, and especially in the military. We need to restore the military to the greatness that it once had. It needs to be refunded. All those who were fired from the captain level and above, driven out by the feminist Ooh, don't get me started on this. The so-called feminists who replaced them, many of whom can't fire a gun. Do you know that we have women running the Air Force who can't fly a plane and a woman running the Navy who can't pilot a single-engine boat? Do you understand what Obama has done to the command structure of this military? Is it any wonder that ISIS has not been destroyed? I would start by revamping the military, but look, there's so much to do. That's only one of the things. Deanna, I'm sending you my book. I'm not even going to mention it because I don't want to offend the government workers out there who will think that I'm promoting a product. Uh, that's anathema to them. You see, they like everything for free. They get a check from the government, so they like to listen to radio with no advertisements. They don't want any sponsors. They don't want any hosts talking about books that they wrote because that's kind of below them, this kind of promotion stuff. that That's so gauche. The way it's done in Europe is the government pays for the media. And so the media is free to everyone who listens to it. And then you don't have to listen to any commercials. Those ugly commercials, you know, no one has to listen to them in Europe where the government controls all of the outlets of the media. That's the kind of thing they want in America is a nice, smooth, uh, let us say, Montavani delivery of everything where all is good and all is well. Anyway, the latest headline, headline on Drudge, 
birth certificate for Cruz's mother shows she was born in the United States in the state of Delaware. End of story. It's over. The smear campaign is gone. What you should do is look at Cruz's policies. Now, I am not supporting Cruz. I'm supporting Trump. I've said that before. I'm, I'm not equivocating on it. I think Cruz is a great guy. I think he's very smart. Not think I know he's very smart. But I don't think he could win against Hillary. That's the only reason I don't support him. I don't think he can beat her in a general election. He doesn't have the charisma to beat Hillary. He's good. He's strong. But no, 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 no. I'd have him running a major league part of the government if Trump won. And I'm sure he's thinking about it. And again, I got to say this. There wasn't one person on that Republican stage that I wouldn't vote for over any Democrat. Not one of them. Every one of them was a fine person. And that would be the cabinet for Donald Trump. Back in a minute. It's 54 minutes after the hour. Show runs for another huge hour across America. Let's go to some of the callers on the Savage Nation. 855-407-282 is the phone number. Tom on WMAL in the nation's capital. MAL, what's on your mind? Dr. Savage, I'm a 35-year member of a union, matter of fact, two unions, and uh, what you said about Hillary having the unions in their pocket may be what they portray or what the officials say, but I have never seen union members openly talking on the job about any candidate, Democrat or Republican, as they are with Trump. So, no, I, no, I said the opposite. I said that the head of the SEIU herself said with alarm yesterday that 64% of her members want to vote Republican this time. She's shocked. She doesn't know what to do about it. No, she doesn't, because uh, I, I would say it's even higher than that. I don't know what it is about Donald Trump in and, and, and this part, portion of his life, but he has absolutely uh, moved the membership uh, of most unions. Tom, I mean, Tom it's, gonna be a, it's going to be a landslide. The only thing that can stop this landslide of Trump versus Hillary are two things, both of which I'd rather not mention on this radio show. Because anyone with a brain can figure out what the what the criminals in the Democrat Party are liable to do to hold on to power. It's what they've done from the beginning of time. That's what frightens me. And I hope to God that Trump understands the dangers. The closer he gets to the prize, the higher the risk becomes. With Perot also. Thank on, uh, ha hang on there, Tom. We're going to send you a copy of my book. I can't mention the name because I may offend the Medal of Honor winner who thinks it's too much of a self-promotion to mention the book. You see, in government service, they don't have to sell anything. They don't provide any product or service. All I do is collect a check and then tell everyone who does provide a product or service that they're gauche for uh, talking about them. Because that's not the way it's done in a socialist uh, heaven. See, there's no commerce in a socialist heaven. There's no need to, need to promote a book or sell a radio show. There's no need for advertisements. In socialist heaven, as in North Korea, you don't need advertisers. What you need is state-run television, state-run radio. And then you have, well, let's say there's harmony. It's harmony because you hear exactly what they want you to hear. And there's no dissent. And the bodies keep falling. People keep disappearing off the streets in black cars. But that's good because it keeps things quiet and calm. That's the way it's done in uh, socialism. 855-407-282. I've got one open line, two open lines, three open lines. Be here or be nowhere. It's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Oh, girl, to call my own. I want to dream of a life. 
simplistic romanticism in an age of cynicism? That's the question. I don't know, but the music's nice. Welcome to hour number three. We move into the end of the week. It's soon going to be pow time. Knock down a primo and hit the surf. Michael Savage, one more hour on the Savage Nation. We have one open line at 855-407-282. I want to focus on a headline about a cop being shot in Philadelphia where the shooter confessed Islam was his motive. Now, the reason this is a double story is not only that the officer survived being shot eight times, 11 times, by this piece of garbage, the guy gives a confession alleging that he did it in the name of Islam, pledged loyalty to the Islamic State, right? And the police chief comes out and acknowledges that. Let's play that first. Police chief first. Got to hear it. Got to hear the first. suspect upstairs, homicide unit, talked to him. Uh, right away, he didn't have anything to say. But then he stated that he pledges his allegiance to Islamic State. He follows Allah. And that is the reason he was called upon to do this. Now, that's Philadelphia homicide captain James Clark telling clearly, told it to CNN, that he did it, and the guy did it in the name of Allah, pledges allegiance to the Islamic State. Right? She said, oh, well, that's a month after South Southern California. I mean, son, there's a pattern here. You know, you can't, even a dummy can see that there's some kind of pattern here. And you might slow down bringing in Muslims from Syria in particular. But no, it gets even better. You ready for this one? Because this is shocking to believe. The mayor, Philadelphia Mayor Jim Kenney, goes on the air and says the following, which you will not believe unless you hear it with your own ears. Go ahead. In no way, shape, or form does anyone in this room believe that Islam or the teaching of Islam has anything to do with what you've seen on that screen. That is abhorrent. It's, it's just it's terrible, and it does not represent the religion in any way, shape, or form or any of its teachings. Uh, and uh, this, is, this is a criminal uh, with, a, with a stolen gun who tried to kill one of our officers. It has nothing to do with being a Muslim or following the Islamic faith. So I want to turn it back over to uh, Commissioner for any questions you may have. So why would he say that? Why does he find it necessary to repeat the homily? Every time there's a killing or a murder or a terrorist act by a Muslim, why do the, does the leadership, the liberal leadership in this country, attempt to cover up the connection to Islam? And on the other side of the coin, why is it important that we, the people, know when something is connected to a religion, in this case, Islam? Because unless we know the face of those coming at us and what they believe in, we have no chance to defend ourselves. It's that simple. Moreover, there's a big political story at play connected to this. Why would you bring in Muslims from Syria who cannot be vetted by this government? They didn't vet the two in San Bernardino. They ushered them right in and they committed a massacre. How can they vet all those people coming in from Syria? You know they can't. You know they're lying about it. So why would you even take the chance if you cared about the people? Why would you do to this country what Merkel has done to Germany? Unless you hate the country. You understand what I'm saying to you? That's a big story. I think that another big story is Obama with his big lie that he's not trying to take away our guns. Another big story is that the uh, birth certificate was shown today to Breitbart News of Ted Cruz's mother. She was born in Delaware. Even though he was born in Canada, it makes him a natural-born citizen. End the story. Move on. Let's talk about Cruz's policies as opposed to Hillary's policies. Uh, we can do that at any time. And so I want to begin with the callers at 855-407-282. I want to play some of the great sound. Wasn't there another sound bite that I... Oh, yes, it's the Obama sound in our number three. And that is Obama arguing with a rape victim. That's the one, Robert. That's the one we were going to get to. During the uh, Stalinist uh, show trial last night about guns, they had to let a few people on who challenged Obama in order to make it look fair, you know. The, 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 the channel of, uh, 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 of Wolf Blitzer, fair. So they had a rape victim on, and she said she wants a gun. And, of course, the great president who doesn't own one and doesn't know how to fire one and is afraid of them had this to say in clip three. As a survivor of rape and now a mother to two small children, you know, it seems like being able to purchase a firearm of my choosing and being able to carry that wherever my, me and my family are, it seems like my basic responsibility as a parent at this point. I have been unspeakably victimized once already, and I refuse to let that happen again to myself or my kids. 
So why can't your administration see that these restrictions that you're putting to make it harder for me